Hey y'all, it's Jess. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm in the garden now. We'll be heading into the kitchen here in just a minute. Uh, today I am talking to you entirely about okra. Now I am a born and raised southerner. I've lived in Arkansas for the majority of my life. And so, you know, okra is just a completely normal thing to me. I've grown up seeing it in grocery stores and on restaurant menus. It has been regularly on my table my entire life. Uh, and even, you know, now as a gardener, it is in everybody's garden around here. It's in all the farmer's markets. It's just a very common thing to grow and eat here in the South. Uh, actually, I didn't realize that it was a regional thing until I started to share about it on YouTube and I had such a response of like, oh, I've never heard of that before. I've never grown it before. Um, from people from all other regions in the country as well as across the world. And then, uh, in turn, several of you decided to grow it after seeing it on our channel, and then I'm now I'm getting the messages of what do I do with this okra. So uh, today, I just wanna talk to you a little bit about it. I wanna show you a couple of very, very simple ways that we use okra in our house. Uh, but first, I wanna talk to you a little bit about the plant itself. So here I am standing uh, next to a row of okra plants. As you can see, they are in my raised beds, but they are a good bit taller than me at this point. It is the end of July, and here these will go, I mean, probably well into October. They get massive. We call them okra trees by the end of the year. And uh, they're just a really interesting growth pattern. Now, okra thrives on heat. It is originating in um, Africa. Some varieties are traced back to Asia and Ethiopia. So definitely like a tropical hot plant. That's probably why it is more known in the south because it probably grows better here. Um, and as you can see, these plants are really full. They're really huge. I've seen it grow in very, very poor soil conditions. I've grown it in very poor soil conditions, just in very clay soil. It really thrives even in really uh, negative circumstances. Now these plants are incredibly lush because this is really good soil that they're in. Uh, they don't always look quite this full and are not always quite this productive. Uh, by the end of the season, the base of these plants will be just absolutely massive. Like we actually have to get like a hatchet to chop them down at the end of the season. Uh, you can just pull them out, which is pretty crazy. But they're super, super productive. Uh, by this time of year, we are just covered up in okra. Now, if you take a look here at this blossom, these may look a little familiar to you, um, even if you have never seen okra grow before. These beautiful flowers are reminiscent of hibiscus. So that's because okra and hibiscus are actually relatives. They're both members of the mallow family. And actually, okra blossoms are my favorite of all the blossoms that grow in the garden. I think they're just absolutely beautiful. I love the plants themselves. They're, they're very fascinating to watch grow. I call their leaves tree stars because they actually do look like them. Uh, but all together, just an absolutely gorgeous plant, very productive and just really easy to grow. One of the characteristics of okra that really stands out, and some people say it would be a standout for the negative, um, is the mucilage. Being a member of the mallow family, um, marshmallow root is something that is often used herbally to ease stomach pains and intestinal pains. Uh, hibiscus as well is very good for that. And okra. Um, the one thing that okra haters will say usually is the reason why they do not like to eat okra is that it's gooey or that it's slimy. And to be fair, that is true. Um, it does definitely have a little bit of slime inside of it. Uh, that is called mucilage. And the mucilage in okra is one of its greatest merits if you can get over the texture. I understand if you're a texture person, it can be kind of hard to get over, and that is why some people say that they don't like to eat it. Um, but mucilage is so good for your intestinal tract, and eating okra is something that is actually really, really good for your health as far as your gut health goes, um, digestion, okra is really good. So the first way that we eat a lot of our okra is raw. We jokingly call it pre-fried okra. That's how I first uh, 
posed this to my children and said, hey, do you want to eat some pre-fried okra? Some of them went for it, some of it not so much, but just snack on it raw. Now I personally could eat my weight in raw okra um, and do it very regularly eat it. I can get over like textures and stuff though and I can eat most things even if I don't love them for the sake of health benefits and at this point now that's how it was when I first started and I was like I don't know that's kind of weird but I kind of pushed through it and now I actually really enjoy it. I think that it's really tasty. I like it that way. I like to be able to actually taste what the plant tastes like. However, I understand that's not for everybody, so we are gonna take some in the house. I'm gonna show you a couple really simple ways to cook it. First, I'm gonna show you a few of the varieties that I have growing in my garden. And as you can see, the plants are all very similar, but this is actually three different varieties in front of us. Here, I've let some of these pods get really big because I wanted to be able to show you. Um, here is a variety called Texas Hill Country. And this is a very squatty and uh, round variety. Now, these you do not often see in stores like if you do buy okra in the store or in the freezer section already breaded to be fried or uh, chopped to be stewed it's never going to be these really big fat varieties now these are my favorite i really really like these however this one is way too big uh, they get what's called woody and uh, they're really tough I, I don't eat them at this point. So this will go to that, this okra right here will go to our pigs. And they grow insanely, insanely fast. So actually this one was probably this size about 36 hours ago. Uh, quite literally, if you wanna stay on top of them and harvest them at the peak time, you really have to do it twice a day during the heat of the summer. They really actually grow that fast. This is about the perfect size for this variety and sometimes I'll pick them even here when they're even smaller if I know I'm not going to be able to get back out that evening and pick them when they're a little bigger. Here's a variety uh, called Bowling Red. This one is really, really lovely. It's super soft. This is about the perfect size here to harvest it. They can go a little bit bigger, but here's another one. Now, the thing with some of the thinner okras, like this Bowling Red and some of the other varieties that grow long and thin, this, this one you could still eat. It's a little bit hard. Um, I probably wouldn't eat it raw, but this one could still be fried or stewed. Um, and so that is one benefit of growing the thinner ones. You have a little bit more leeway. As far as their usability. Now here um, you can see this green with red tip. This is actually a seed that I believe cross-pollinated from seeds that I saved. Um, I saved these a couple of years ago and as you can see uh, this is not the bowling red but it's also not the green and I've been growing them since then and so this is my second year to grow them. I'm trying to see if I can stabilize it and create this new variety. I really like what it did. It's just fascinating. I haven't seen anything like it for sale and it's just kind of a red and green mix. So I haven't, I haven't stabilized that yet so I haven't named it. Down here I've got the Clemson Spineless growing. This is probably the more common variety of heirloom okra. Like if you were to buy seeds like at a regular store without ordering from a specialty place that deals in heirlooms, Clemson Spineless is probably the one that you would come across. Just a really basic green, um, green okra. And it is actually one of my favorites. In most cases where there are the really common heirlooms, I actually usually don't prefer those. I like to find something that nobody's growing and that I can't get anywhere else. Uh, but the Clemson Spineless is actually a really fantastic okra. So I do grow it every year, at least a few plants. There are a few more Clemson Spineless right here. And down here I have a variety that I'm growing for the first time this year called Old Alabama Red. And uh, it's very, very similar from for the Texas Hill Country. This year I have I think 18 okra plants in my garden, which is more than enough for our family. Honestly, at this point, uh, there are several big pods that I've failed to harvest. Uh, they just got too big because I just haven't been able to stay on top of harvesting that much. And we have eaten so much okra already. Now I'm going to, I, you know, kind of took a break from harvesting it real regularly and I'll go and cut all those big pods off, feed them to my pigs and then start harvesting again because I definitely want to 
go ahead and bread some of it and put it in the freezer to be able to eat over the winter and also pickle some of it. Okay, so I've got my shears here and I've got a basket. One thing to know that when you're picking okra, it is not something that you can just pick off by hand. It's really tough to detach. You'll end up tearing your plants off, up, so I always cut it off. And I'm gonna go pick a variety of these okras and then we'll head in the house and I'll show you uh, how I most commonly cook them. Okay, so this right here is about a daily harvest this time of year. That's probably about two pounds of okra and um, if I stayed on top of it, this is how much I would get every day, which that's a lot. So let's take it inside and see what we can do with it. All right, so I hate making cooking videos. I'm pretty open about this. I do it though because I really want to empower people to grow their own food. And in doing that, you need to empower people to prepare it because if you grow it and then don't know what to do with it, you'll end up falling back on convenience foods and old habits or you'll just get sick of eating the same thing over and over. Um, I have a big family and I am generally cooking for our family and for kids. Uh, one of the things that comes up in okra is a really good example of that uh, is the idea of hiding the vegetables and when my kids were really little my older kids I kind of fell into that oh, I'm gonna hide the vegetables and there were all these cookbooks it was like a really trendy thing about 10 years ago to hide the vegetables and cook things where you wouldn't even know that s there were veggies hidden in it um, I've actually kind of changed tact on how I make food now I'm totally uh, for things like zucchini bread and using things in unconventional ways. But I personally have chosen to never do that to sneak veggies in my kids um, because I really want to teach them to embrace these foods and to understand that they're helpful for their body and why, uh, why we choose to eat them. And in that, I r really like just cooking things in their full glory um, and making them very simply so my kids can decide whether they like them or not based on what they really taste like. Now there are tons of okra recipes. I'm actually going to put some links down below. There are great things you can make like stews and um, gumbos. That's something that's very popular to use okra with. Now obviously those are really involved recipes. Um, that are typically whole meals. Today I'm just going to show you two really simple ways to prepare okra without any other preparation or much else required that you can just cook the okra, let it shine, and enjoy it. Uh, the first way is going to be roasting it. Um, now I push roasted radishes. I'm all about roasting root vegetables. Um, anything, anything that I grow in my garden, one of my favorite ways to cook it is just put it in a hot oven with some salt and some oil on it because I think that is a prime example of letting something shine. Uh, today, neither one of the things that I'm showing you is actually really a recipe. It's just a roundabout um, how to do it and you can decide for yourself if you like it or if you feel like something needs to be added. Um, I am a true southern cook. I measure nothing. I cannot tell you exactly what is in something um, by weight, but I think it's better that way. And really, I would love to give all of you guys permission to go in the kitchen and cook by what tastes good to you. Um, today, I'm not cooking very much of this stuff because I'm really just doing this to show you guys. Um, I've taken some of this okra, it's all washed and dried. Uh, now I don't spray anything in my garden, so this is organic and uh, I'm not having to like soak it to get any sort of chemicals off or anything like that. So I just rinsed it off and dried it. And I've just taken these okras and I've cut just the tops and the very tips off and then sliced them in half just like this. I'm gonna put them in a bowl here and then I'm just gonna put a light drizzle of oil and a good pinch of a good flaky salt. If you have not cooked with like chunky flaky salt, um, I do implore you to give it a try and at the very least use kosher salt. Um, changes completely the flavor of what you're cooking to use good salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a roasting pan. Normally I would obviously make a lot more of this for my family, however I'm really just making this video to show you guys today. This will get eaten, but um, 
as a side, I would probably do about three times as much if we were all eating it. So my oven is preheated to 425 and this has oil and salt on it and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in there for about 15 minutes. Now, now I'll give that a shake about every five minutes while it's cooking to make sure it's getting evenly uh, roasted. It's gonna get little charred bits in some places and get nice and soft. And while I'm doing that, we're gonna look at uh, how we fry okra. So first things first, we are going to take these washed and uh, dried okra. They're actually still just a tiny bit damp. And we're gonna cut them into relatively even thickness little coins. Uh, this is where I really like these fat okras like the Texas Hill Country or um, Star of David is one, uh, Old Alabama Red, because I just like how they make these big pieces when you fry them. Another thing you can do is take smaller okras that are still really young and immature and soft and just fry the whole thing. So I'm going to do a few of those that way, just, um, but for the most part we're going to cut these up into little coins. Okay, so here's some okra. Again, normally I would make a lot more than this. For my family, I would do maybe four or five times this amount if this is gonna be a side to our dinner, but it's the middle of the day and I am just doing this for the sake of this video. I am, however, making enough that everybody can have a few pieces or else we will have an okra war break out in the kitchen. I don't measure anything, and so it's really difficult to show people exactly what to do whenever I don't have an exact way of doing things. So again, I'm going to encourage you here to play with this and make it your own. I have some uh, cornmeal here. Um, I've seen some people say to mix it with flour is what I use. I like it. Play with it. If you, if you cook this and you don't like the texture, if it's too gritty for you, you can use like half flour in this but i do really like using cornmeal here in this bowl i have two eggs that i've just cracked and uh whipped a little bit and here i'm just putting a little bit of this cornmeal obviously the amounts here are going to vary depending on how much okra you're cooking uh, the things that i like to put in my cornmeal and i'm pretty liberal with this is uh, some paprika and as you can see here i probably just put half a tablespoon of paprika in with this cornmeal. And then I usually put a couple sprinkles of cayenne. So I get just a little bit spicy, but not too spicy. And then I use a pretty liberal amount of salt. Now here I'm using kosher salt. Uh, that's what I typically cook with uh, if it's going into a mix. And that was, that was maybe like half a teaspoon of salt. Now you can go higher on that. But what I usually will do is I will cook a couple of pieces with the seasoning as I have it and then I'll taste it and decide what needs to be added to it. The reason why I don't just do it the same every time is because sometimes I add different stuff. Sometimes I'll add fresh herbs to it. Um, you know, sometimes whenever I am cooking it specifically for the kids, I won't make it spicy at all. Um, or if I'm just making it for like me and Jeremiah, I will make it spicier. It really just depends. So what I'm doing here, if you're not familiar with frying, is I'm just putting these into this egg mixture, flipping them over so they're coated, and then dropping them in the cornmeal and turning them around until they're completely coated. I've got a little bit of oil here that's preheated in a cast iron pan. Uh, obviously a small pan, normally I'd be using a much bigger one. And it's pretty much just simply repeating this process. And obviously when I'm doing a large amount, I'll do several pieces at a time. Um, but I'm just trying to really make sure you guys see. I'm gonna drop it in there and I'll wait a couple minutes. This oil is just getting heated up. This process goes a little faster once the oil's a little warmer. I've got this on medium heat. Okay, so I got a plate with a paper towel on it and I'm just gonna take this fork or you can use some little tongs and turn these over. You give them a minute or two per side. You're not worried so much in this process about softening the okra up a whole lot, like it's gonna soften up. We're mostly just cooking this cornmeal batter that's on these. All right, I just pulled these out. Jeremiah already came and stole a couple of them. Uh, just a, probably four or five minutes in this oil. Um, okay, super good. Um, I think I got the seasoning pretty good. 
maybe use just a touch more salt. Um, now you can pre-bread these and then freeze them. And um, basically what I do for that is I can, I'll bread them all and lay them on like a cookie sheet and then put them in the freezer. I just set them up in our deep freezer. And then once they're frozen, you just break it all apart and put it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. And then you can just fry them directly from that. Um, obviously, fried food is not the healthiest way to eat your garden bounty. So okra is one of the few things that we eat out of the garden fried on a regular basis. Now I've just put all of these in because I know my seasoning is good. I do this with my hands. I'm sure there's a more sophisticated way to do that um, that I might should have done to make a video, but that's why I don't like making cooking videos because the truth of the matter is I bread things with my hands. <laughs> um, so you can fill this pan uh, and fry all of these at once, which is much faster than doing them individually. Uh, whenever I do fill this pan, it's actually gonna put the oil up over the top so I won't have to flip them all over as much. Now that batch is frying and I've just pulled this out of the oven. It's been in there for about 15 minutes. Um, again, this is gonna be a plate thing of preference. This is about exactly how I like it. Now some of these really small pieces, you can see that they sort of like crisped up. So it is best to try to do this with as uniform pieces as possible so they go about the same way. Now this is done, and actually you can eat them just like this. It's really hot right now. Um, this kind of helps cut the slimy texture of okra to roast it. Can't hold that. Um, one thing that I'm gonna be doing I, with the rest of the okra that I picked today, we're going camping this weekend, and I'm just going to, it's washed, I'm gonna bag it up and take us with it, take it with us in the cooler, and then I'll do a very similar thing, tossing it with some oil and some salt uh, I could at this point throw some thyme on here it'd be a really good seasoning to put on it I like just eating it with just salt you can put pepper or you could put uh, red pepper just depending on what your preference is you could put something spicy on it but um, I just like salt I like to keep it simple uh, but I'm gonna be taking it and grilling it we'll just put it on skewers and cook it very similar to this I'll leave it whole for putting it on the grill and that just kind of blisters some places on the outside and it's really tasty. Another thing that I really like to do with roasted okra is make some sort of dipping sauce, like a little aioli or something that's herbed would be really good with this. But completely delicious roasted. It really does kind of change the flavor, kind of changes the texture if the sliminess of eating it raw with that crunch and sliminess is not something that you can handle roasting it. it makes it a really different texture and just really brings out a good flavor. So these are the two ways that I most commonly cook okra. This doesn't require any prep work, any thinking ahead. It can go from the garden to our table in less than 25 minutes this way. So literally it's like, oh, what do I cook for dinner? I can throw okra with it without really much forethought at all. Like I said, I will put some links down below to give you some more ideas if you wanna get more in depth with cooking okra. I've made good fritters before, um, and of course, uh, there are different stews, at, and then pickling it is something that I usually get into later in the year. At this point, we're just eating it fresh, but just a really basic pickling recipe, and I'll put links for all that down below if you're looking for some direction on what to do uh, beyond just your daily dinner plan. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this is helpful for you, and I hope you will consider growing okra in your garden um, I know that it is one of my favorite things to grow. It's always on my must grow list and it is just a big part of our summer diet. Thank you or bless you until next time.